Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show, get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international warring author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing, it's fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. Takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love will be the first to go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Zia has garnered great reviews in Eve 11 and George by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassidy, Ford Riley, and Manales. So grab your copy today for Girls Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com on over 30 podcast platforms, including Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also, Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, Apple Music, and coming soon to HamiltonRadio.net and more networks coming. And take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. And for great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com and check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. T-shirts, pop sockets, throw pillows, tote bags, hoodies, makes great gifts 24-7. Go to Amazon.com and check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com slash Mia Molson Zia for great books like Missing, Once and Wrinkles. Also T-shirts, pop sockets, hoodies, phone cases, cool merchandise, and more. Amazon.com slash Mia Molson Zia. Check it out today. Also support the Mike Widener Show on Anchor FM, PayPal, the Mike Widener Show.com. And you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com for the Mike Widener Show. Make sure you do so today. We're here with two terrific gentlemen from the Detroit, Michigan area, and one of them is a soul spiritual singer with four albums to date and uh, sang background vocals and also songwriter for Urban Contemporary Gospel um, and um, wrote for Yolanda Adams and uh, wrote for the Gospel Group Commissioned and featured Open Arms, also More Than Just a Melody, also wrote for uh, Dave Hollister with Cryon and also the... Uh, 112 tribute to the joyous big and also uh he has a latest release which is an anthem that honors uh women of all colors all over the world we're looking forward to it and uh, talking about that and also company we have a wonderful gentleman who's a music promoter at eat music group he's an accomplished singer songwriter composer producer and more and he really helps a lot of amazing careers including this wonderful gentleman we have on right now live ladies and gentlemen from the plus studios from beautiful downtown Detroit and in that Motor City area, we have two wonderful gentlemen, and one of them will be talking about Black Pearl. Ladies and gentlemen, the very multi talented gentleman, soul spiritual singer from Detroit, Michigan, Park Stewart, and the very talented music promoter and more, Edward Armstead III. Guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Oh, man. It's a good evening. Here, man. Thanks for having us. Well, it's great that I have you guys on board as well, too. And um, and and then uh, Parks, first of all, we'll talk about your latest song, Black Pearl. You're a soul spiritual singer from Detroit, Michigan with four albums to date. You sang background vocals, songwriter, and more as well. And you also got your uh, re latest release as an anthem, honoring women of all colors all over the world. We'll talk about that. And um, Edward, you're a music promoter at Eat Music Group. You're a accomplished singer, songwriter, composer, producer. You've done just about everything. You help amazing artists like Parks as well. And uh, before we get into all that, uh, first of all, let's go to uh, Edward being the uh, music promoter himself. And uh, tell us how you first got started. Let's talk about you first, Ed. Well, in, in terms of the label, are you talking about me and Parks' relationship? Um, in, a, in, in part like you. So tell us how you first got started. So in other words, just go into the Wayback Machine. Um, I actually... Um, got started like around 1996 I would say I was working with a friend of mine and um being around a label he gave me an opportunity he said you know I think you had the gift that you could probably pull off promotion if you knew how to do it and I was you know kind of scared I'm like no nah, I don't want to be the guy that's promoting the records and so after being around the guy gave me a shot and he said just come watch me do it so I watched him for a few months and next thing you know he was turning the artist on the label over to me and you know I was kind of a little leery because that I went from writing songs and producing songs to now making sure they're getting heard. So it was a unique experience. It helped me a lot and it made it so that I could promote or really work any kind of record. It was an experience that I didn't ask for, but I was glad I had it because uh, it allowed me in 96 to promote Park's uh, second album. 
um, in my company in your ear uh, was the spearhead of it. And if I hadn't learned at the time where I was, you know, really looking towards doing songwriting and producing. So I thought um, if I wouldn't have learned that, I wouldn't have been able to work his record. So that's kind of where it all started. But I've always had a love for music and songwriting. My dad um, is, was a, a soul singer. His stage name was Eddie Hill. You can find him on um, YouTube and, and different uh, uh, platforms. He had a song called Baby I Cried that he did. And you can see that it looks like an Ed Sullivan show or something to that effect. But he also had a song called Nothing Sweeter Than You and that all the siblings had and we knew. And I actually have the record. So we, we actually know the song and all the melodies. So music has been in our family. My cousin was, was the late Purvis Jackson. The song was The Spinners. Jackie Wilson is our third cousin. So wow. music has kind of been in my family. So I, I, I kind of, you may as well say I tripped and fell into uh, music, period. <laughs> Some kind of way I had to stand up and walk into music. And like I said, from the 90s, I started just doing uh, one thing that led to management, led to road management. I've kind of done pretty much, as you said, everything. But that was the beginning of the launching pad. And it was my first placement because, you know, you couldn't be with ASCAP, BMI or anybody like that if you didn't have something that met the medium or published work. So my first work was published in 1996 as an ASCAP songwriter, which kind of led us to where we are to now. <clears throat> Excuse me. And as it relates to Eat Music, Parks and I have been working together about 30 years. And we've, we, we were looking at deals and looking at different situations. And we've seen deals come and go. And it was always something that was to our liking, but it was a hundred other things that weren't. So many addendums to this where they were giving us this and by the end of the sentence, we lost it, you know? And so it got to the place where we said, you know what, if we gonna do this, we might as well do it our way. And so September of 2020, we released our first single, which was called Put the K in Cool. Um, I don't know if I sent you that or not. And um, after that, we released a, a Christmas CD, Extraordinary Christmas. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. The previous single before Black Pearl was Clear Your Mind. And um, currently Black Pearl is out and we're getting ready to release another single after this, followed by an EP. And then we'll be back to Christmas with a whole nother campaign. So that's kind of how it started and where we got to where we are now. I said, if it's going to be done right, you know, I love Parks. That's my brother. And um, no, I don't think anybody's going to take care of you better than me is what I said to him. And so being executive producer, I kind of told him, be at the studio, it's paid for, shut up, I don't want to hear what you have to say. And it was one of those kind of things, or he wouldn't have did it, because me being his brother, he didn't want me to take on the undertaking. But I said, I want to see you get taken care of. And so if that means I have to do it, then that's how Eat Music was born. And it's Eat Music is my name, Edward Armstead III. And our slogan is, if you're hungry for a melody, eat music. Mm, I like that concept. And I could tell he uh, he happened to wisen up uh, when he mentioned it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, what a family. That's amazing. We'll talk to Parks about that. <laughs> Edward, was it one precise moment that simply influenced you into what you're doing for the rest of your career? So what was that one moment that simply said, this is it for me? The precise moment. I would have to say it was 2006. Um, I, I got really sick. My blood sugar was 747. Me and Parks had just got back from Arkansas doing a music seminar. And we I wasn't taking care of my body. I'm going to be honest, Mr. Wagner. And my wife told me to watch what I eat. And I, I didn't think any of it. Um, we stayed in the Peabody Hotel. We had our own personal chef. So she told me to watch what I ate. And so I was watching it while I was eating it. Um, we had a, I had pasta for days, shrimp, chicken, whatever I wanted. The guy was right there. So I had to take advantage of that. So what happens was my blood sugar was going through the roof. And I didn't know it. I didn't have any issues with diabetes. And by the time I got home off the plane, it was over 500 because by the time I got home at the end of the day, I had two seizures at home and two at the hospital and my blood sugar was 747. Wow. And so you might say, well, how does that tie into a musical moment? Well, while I was in the coma, it was like God was working some things out in my behalf because when I came out of the coma, I came out to a gold record. I had wrote a single for a particular artist and in less than 60 days, it had went 500,000 units. And mm -hmm. so that was a particular moment that really stuck with me because here I am in a coma. I can do nothing about this. And so it was really out of my hands. So that was a moment that really stuck with me because an artist actually heard a song that I wrote for somebody else and said, I want to record that. And so when they called me and asked me about it, you know, I was still kind of 
goofy in the head with all the pills and stuff I was taking. And um, they said, please don't hang up. I was just hanging up the phone because <laughs> the doctor said, whatever you do that's strenuous, you can't do it anymore. It, it's going to take you back to where you were. So my wife was really um, reluctant um, to, to let me use the phone or anything. So they called me and they said, please don't hang up. We want to send you a mechanical license. So we can pay you. And then I started to listen. They sent me the mechanical license. And in 60 days, it was life changing. Sold 500,000 copies of a song that I wrote. And I couldn't say nothing because I was actually in a coma. They were bugging me saying, why aren't you answering your phone? I said, I didn't hear my phone. And when I told them why, they said, wow, you were a miracle. So that was one of the most defining moments that gave me really the strength to do what I'm doing now. That was miraculous. I got to say that. I asked that question a lot. I mean, your story takes the cake. I got to say that. That is so amazing. Wow. And I got to watch it with a fried chicken myself, too. I got to remind myself of that. Thanks to you. <laughs> <laughs> and who are you your favorite artists, singers, songwriters, and musicians growing up, Edward? Um, of course, uh, I would say one of my greatest influences, uh, I like uh, Glenn Jones. Mm -hmm. I love um, Brian McKnight, of course, the Winans Commission, of course, Park Stewart. Um, one of my favorite female singers is Layla Hathaway. Mm. Okay. All right. Well, that sounds pretty good. We'll talk about your favorite artist, uh, Park Stewart, in just one minute. But first, listen to the Mike Widener Show at the MikeWidenerShow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit our line at SonicWebStudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at SonicWebStudios.com. Mention the Mike Widener Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give an official shout-out to our official sponsor of the Mike Widener Show, international warring author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast-paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing is fast-paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. Takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love will be the first go missing. It's available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Zia has garnered great reviews in Eve 11 and George by Howard's celebrities, including Joanna Cassidy, Ford Riley, and Minnells. So grab your copy today, Four Goes Missing by Mia Molson Zia. Available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com on over 30 podcast platforms coming soon to hamiltonradio.net Thursday nights at 9. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. And for great gift ideas, go to amazon.com and check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, go to amazon.com slash Mia Molson Zia for great books like Missing, Once and Wrinkles, cool merchandise and more amazon.com slash me and Molson Dia. Check it out today. Also support the Mike Wagner show on anchor FM, PayPal, the Mike Wagner show.com. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com for the Mike Wagner show. Make sure you do so today. We're here with two terrific gentlemen from the Detroit, Michigan area here on the Mike Wagner show. We talked to Edward, Edward Armstead, the third or uh, E3 from the eat music group. We had an amazing story to talk about that. And one of his favorite art he likes to talk about is right here. Park Stewart and um, parks your soul inspirational singer from Detroit. And you uh, had four albums a day. You um, sang background and worked with a number of artists. you got uh, black Pearl coming up. You also have some albums. And uh, before we talk about all that, including your latest release, tell us parks, how you first got started. It's your turn. Oh, wow. I, I actually got started when I was, uh, my love for music, I was kind of connected to it. Uh, my mom used to uh, sing a song to me when she mm. would uh, rub my head and I lay in her lap. And uh, I was intrigued by the lyrics of it. And mm -hmm. I know it wasn't, but about five or six, I was in kindergarten properly. And it's a song she used to do. I used to come in and she'd lay me in her lap. I'd just come in, in the house and lay in her lap and she would hum that song to me. And uh, that was my first connection to lyrical content. And then my father was a big uh, connoisseur of music, hmm. all genres of music, but mainly jazz. And uh, he played everything from jazz to country western to Sam Cooke to old Motown to uh, uh, you, you, you name it, he played it, you know, uh, Miles Davis. And so I learned jazz at, at, at an early age. And then the old Motown, I always just listen to the songs. And for some reason, uh, I was always connected to the lyrical content of songs. I would find myself filling the songs at a young age, crying on songs that 
talked about broken hearts and I was only like 10 or 11 years old. Oh my goodness. Wow. <laughs> you know, but, well, I would feel the songs for some reason. And uh, then my, my first real thing was I would take the old 45 records, 33 vinyl, and I would play them in my room and I would just close the door and stay in all day and listen to music. And I did a talent show uh, as a sophomore, freshman or sophomore in high school. And uh, that's when I knew that I had a gift that uh, that would uh, people wanted to hear, you know, to touch people. Because mm. after the talent show, the the connection would from me to me to my spirituality to the people, uh, that connection it was unforgettable. And so that was my first uh, connection with music, and that's when I knew that defining moment for me was uh, that connection there. Then, you know, of course, I had all the favorites to listen to in my household. Uh, uh, you know, I was Stevie Wonder fan. I was a Donny Hathaway fan. Uh, later on, I became a, I was a Sam Cooke fan, Marvin Gaye fan. Later on, I became Elder Barge, Babyface. Uh, then my peers, a lot of my peers are great at what they do. And I'm just, I just love uh, Steam and Phil Collins. And I'm, I just love to soak it up like a sponge to see everybody's presentation and then incorporate it in my own. And uh, I just love to embrace what other people do and try to keep it going so that uh, we keep these good music going through the annals of, uh, of time so that it doesn't die out in history of good music. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and of course, you also rattle off your, uh, the one moment that uh, precisely uh, defined you and also rattle off your uh, favorite artists, singers, and everything else that's greatly appreciated. But what about your favorite songwriters? Who are your favorite songwriters growing up? Wow, well, you know, number one, it's got to be Stevie Wonder. Um, that's my, that's my go-to. You know, everything that Stevie writes, the way he does it. So that's, that's, he's number one. And then uh, number two would probably be James Taylor. Uh, I thought James Taylor was, his approach was just awesome. And then the other one would be Michael Franks. Mm. Uh, the way that he, uh, metaphorically writes those lyrics you know he just has a way of just putting those things together so th those be my top three. Oh my gosh i'm ready to pull out the vinyl and i start playing them after this and i still <laughs> got a record player somewhere thanks to you guys <laughs> and of course this all translate parks as well too to um you working with um like like with uh the Contemporary Gospel Group uh, commissioned. You also worked and uh, wrote for Yolanda Adams, also Dave Hollister, and also you wrote uh, Cry On for the uh, 112 uh, tribute to the notorious, notorious B.I.G. And, um, you know, toss about some of the uh, singers and songwriters you've uh, worked with in that arena. Oh, man, it's, it's all a commission. We were all the same age. Uh, before the group was formed, I was uh, friends with my writing part partner, which was Mitchell Jones. And uh, I had met Carl Reed of Commission and Fred Hammond and uh, Keith Staten, and then they formed a group. And uh, I wrote a song that uh, they wanted to record. And uh, on, they didn't put it on the first album, they put it on the second album. And uh, I've been with them ever, ever, ever since. And then the same thing with Yolanda. I met her when she was young, and we just developed a relationship. A lot of the people that I work with musically, uh, it's a relationship of where we meet somewhere. And when the relationship is good, it will transpose to the music, you know? So if it's, the relationship is special, usually the music will be special. And uh, I was fortunate enough to work with those people and uh, God just gave me something special, you know? And then uh, the thing with 112 uh, for the Notorious B.I.G. when he uh, unfortunately passed, uh, uh, Puffy was with uh, 112 then, P. Diddy. And uh, they did the song and uh, they picked my song for his funeral. And uh, I was fortunate enough to, for them to do that. And, you know, just to have other people uh, keep up with what you do and like what you do and the lyrical content kind of touch their uh, soul. It's uh, very inspiring. I think uh, that's kind of what I look out there. To me, music is not just music. It's the movement to me. It's a way to lift people's spirits. It's a way to say things that people can't say themselves. It's also a way to, uh, encourage people to relate to what they feel and then bring them to a place where uh, it's expressive but comforting at the same time. Wow. 
That is very inspiring. I think you really hit the nail on the head in that one. That was just terrific. I got to say that. And um, also, too, you also had some releases as well, too. You had Parks. You had another chapter. When uh, we talk about some of the uh, releases like Heart and Soul, Extraordinary Christmas, you also had Clear Your Mind, Holding On, Silent Tears, He Loves Me. And, um, you know, tell us about some of the albums and the singles. And also, you know, tell us about the music. Tell us about the records and what inspired you to write the lyrics. Oh, wow. You know, basically, uh, the first one, Self-Entitled Parts, uh, was a collaboration of melodic journey, I like to call it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, more of a combination between me, Mitchell Jones, and Earl Wright. Uh, we all produced, and uh, I'm the writer, and then everything that I do will take you on a journey. And a lot of that journey is my own experience. So the authenticity of it will come across because it's true. So you will feel the uh, authenticity of it. You know, nothing is made up. And uh, every album that I do has some theme, but the number one theme in the album most of the time is relationship and love. You know, I'm a big thing about unity, love and relationship. You know, I feel like if we can bring people together somewhere on common ground, then we got the best place to start and we can build from there. So every album I did was basically a message to bring forth unity, love, and some type of relationship or either social awareness, you know? So all the way up until the point, the song Silent Tears is exactly what the title says, Silent Tears. You know, it's a a people that cry, but it's silent. You know, we hurting on the inside, showing the happy space on the outside. And in the days time where people are mentally challenged and things of that nature, where a lot of people don't feel like they can have a release or uh, somewhere to go to talk about their troubles or their problems, then I try to do it through the music. And so that it's a type of cathartic, uh, to car- the cathartic therapy, you know? And so that's what brought me up to uh, the albums that I have now, the heart. So that's why you get those those titles. And then you have, uh, uh, at this point, Clear Your Mind was written during the time of the pandemic. And in the time of the pandemic, uh, that's when uh, everybody was forced to hit the reset button mm-hmm. you know, about what's really important in life. Uh, you, sometimes you don't know how things are important until they're taken away, the privileges that you have. And so it gave me a chance to reflect and I said, maybe I should do a song to call, tell people, you know, clear your mind and let's refocus. Oh my it's God. It's really important. Mm-hmm. And then uh, with the uh, uh, Black Pearl, the new single, it's uh, something that I really wrote about my wife. Mm, okay, okay. And, and then Edward looks like uh, you're getting really impressed about Black Pearl as well, too. It's like you wanted to say something about Black Pearl and some of his music as well, too. So, Edward, feel free to jump in any time, by the way. Okay. Okay. I I think he's still doing some monitoring. He really gets into her music and um, we'll talk about Black Pearl in just one minute. You listen to the Mike Wagner show at the Mike Wagner show.com powered by SonicWeb Studios. Visit online at SonicWebStudios.com for all he needs. Also brought to you by our official sponsor, the Mike Wagner Show, international warring author, Mia Muslims, The Missing, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. We'll be back with Park Stewart and Edward Armstead III with the new release, Black Pearl, after this timeout. We're back with Edward Armstead III and Park Stewart with his new release, Black Pearl, here on the Mike Wagner Show. And um, really got a lot of great inspiration for you guys. They're both out of Detroit, Michigan. And um, Black Pearl is out right now as well, too. And um, let's continue and talk more about Black Pearl and um, what inspired to write and uh, everything else. Uh, uh, my wife. Uh, <laughs> my, my nickname for her is Coco Mom. What was it? Co- Coco Mom? Co- Coco Mom. Coco Mom. Okay. All right. <laughs> Coco Mom, I like that. I'm about to start using that phrase, Coco Mama. <laughs> yeah, it's Coco, Coco Mama. And so I would call her Coco Mama. And uh, so one day I was teasing, I kept telling her, I said, I'm getting ready to write you a song. I said, I don't know what it is, but I'm going to write a song. And one day I was in the car and a melody came to me. Mm-hmm. And uh, previously on a flight, me and Ed had had a discussion about doing a song for 
you know, all women and uh, just a women's theme and then women of color, women of things of all colors. And so uh, I came up with that thing, Coco Mama, and I wrote it for her, but it fits all shades of colors. Mm. Mm -hmm. Every woman can be a black pearl in her own right because a black pearl is something rare. A black mm -hmm. pearl is something tried with time is something special. It also represents wisdom. It represents uh, uh, uniqueness. And so all these things it represents. So it's kind of like I wanted to play tribute because uh, there's a lot of misogyny going on, you know, where we don't respect or seem to uh, think the chivalry is dead. And mm -hmm. uh, it's not true. You know, I think women still want to be treated like women. And I think there are men who love to treat women like women you know, with the class and the sophistication. I still think there are some gentlemen out here. And so I wanted to approach it from that perspective and to let them know that we value them, we honor them, and that what real love will do, you know, when you're with them, someone and you desire to be with them 24 seven, like I do my wife. You know, I don't have times where I wanna be separated because we're one. And a lot of people don't, they look for love like that. And sometimes people don't feel it exists. It exists, but it does. And it so I show them that it does. It's not what people has said marriage has, be, uh, not what marriage has become, but what marriage is meant to be. You know, mm. now we're married for all type of reasons. And uh, a lot of it is not for love. You know, if you searching for security, the security can be found in love. And so my perspective is put the love first and then you'll love 24 seven. And it'll be everlasting. Yes, sir. <laughs> and Edward, I'm sure you can attest to that. You can totally relate. <laughs> I can. Um, I wanted to relate before, but I got kicked out. So that's why I didn't respond because I couldn't get back in. I had to go oh, back really? out. Oh, really? Oh, I was just like, I was trying to uh, motion you in. And you're like, okay. It's like, you know, your, your mic was on. Everything I was trying to motion you, but it uh, looks like. Yeah, I was look, actually gone. I was panicking. I was like, oh, my God, Mr. Wagner's going to kill me. So no, I, I went no, back out. No, I'm too gentle to do that. I thought <laughs> you, you two would do that. But I, I'm just a host there, the middleman everything. I'm just, Like I said, I'm just a messenger. I'm just a narrator. Is that what they say on TV shows? They try to get involved. I'm just a narrator or just a yeah. messenger. Don't shoot me. <laughs> like I, I couldn't even punch parts because you're in the middle. So it's like you're an intercessor, but it, it's it's all good. But I, I would have said, you know, I, I certainly concur with Park Stewart um, in, in the view of the song. And we discussed it. I said, let's do something that's going to honor women. I'm so tired of hearing what I'm hearing on the radio. They have made love and, and quality and caring for women. They've nailed it down to sex. And I said, that's not what it really is. And I, and I live in a house with two black pros, my beautiful daughter, Victoria, as well as my incredible wife, who in 12 days, we will celebrate 29 years of marriage. Oh, congratulations. So, Happy anniversary. Thank you. So we, we know it's real. We know it's pure. I don't even like not being around my wife. I, you know, growing up early, I've heard a lot of my friends say, man, you know, I got to have my time. I do have my time. But I enjoy being around my wife more than anything. And I, you might say I'm crazy. We can, we can go to Target to, and go to their Starbucks, and it's a date. We can, you know, when you, I think if you lose that, what it took to get her, then, then you've already lost it. But I love spending time with my wife. It's not a nagging thing. It's a, honey, where you going? She's like, honey, where you going? I'm like, we going somewhere together. So we'll find ways to just enjoy each other, whether we watching TV, we watching a movie, if we just out walking at the mall, not even spending no money or anything. And so, you know, 29 years of a quality woman with class and style and everything that that song says, it, it makes other men jealous and lust to envy for what we already have. And, and I know Park's wife very, very well. She is a queen in her own right. And so I, he knows what I'm, I've experienced and I know what he's experienced. Mm. And, and for those of you listening out there, you got some really good ideas out there. Thanks to these two gentlemen. So you don't have to spend a lot of money. It can be a simple McDonald's, walk through a mall and everything. You got some great <laughs> ideas right here. I want you guys to put those ideas. <laughs> And some fried chicken too, as well. But you got to do it very wisely. So, <laughs> wisdom, wisdom. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. If you find a black pearl, like you say, go to a seafood restaurant, keep it. Okay. Don't sell it on eBay. If you find a black pearl, keep it. Don't let those two guys know. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my gosh, I think I'm ready for some myself. And where can we find Black Pearl at the uh, song? You can find it on all the digital platforms, Amazon Music, um, iTunes, Apple Music, Spotify, everywhere you can purchase music. You, you can just Google Black Pearl, it's gonna show up everywhere. It's played, it's probably in 250 countries. You can find it anywhere. Okay. All right. We will certainly do so. And uh, we're with um, Park Stewart and Edward Armstead III here on the Mike Wagner Show talking about Black Pearl and more in just a few more minutes. You guys have been fantastic. Love to have you back on. What else can we expect from you guys in 2022 and beyond? You want to ask that, Park? We got a lot going on. We got a, <laughs> we got a new single coming out. I can't say what it is, but you're going to love it. And uh, Black, uh, we have an EP coming, uh, but we have a new single. We have an EP. We're going to have a video coming for Black mm -hmm. Pearl. And we're also going to have another video coming for the EP. And I can tell you this, the EP is going to be called Love Forever. And uh, we're going to have some really beautiful things on there. And the concept uh, is going to take you on another, another journey, another journey. And uh, hopefully you will enjoy the journey, enjoy it, and take the ride with us. And uh, let's see what the end is going to be. Mm, that's amazing. Edward, how about you? He, he kind of summed it up. And as Park said, we're taking you on a journey. A songwriter once said, pack your grips, taking you on a trip. That's what we're doing. Um, any record we put out is going to take you somewhere. And if you allow yourself to go with us, we're going to get to a destination that you will be pleased with. We're only going to put out quality, well-mixed, well-mastered music that you have never heard before. I know a lot of times you listen to the radio, you hear the same song, song 50 different ways. It's still the same content. So we try to be really strategic in what we do. Parks is a soul singer from the heart and you're gonna always feel his soul and everything that we put out. It will be quality, it will be uh, top notch and it will be well worth the wait. And if you're hungry for a melody, eat music. And it's certainly well worth it as well too. And who do you consider biggest influences in your careers? Oh, Parks, wow. you wanna answer that? And I'll tell you mine. Yeah. My, my biggest influence in life period will have to be my mom. Wow. Um, my mother is the greatest supporter. Um, she's the, made the biggest sacrifice. Um, she introduced me to the love that I sing about. Uh, she introduced to me the kindness, and the wisdom. So uh, I have a lot to thank her for. That's my biggest, my biggest influence of life period. And if I'm going to go with just a plain, simple musical influence, then that musical influence would have to be probably uh, Stevie Wonder or Marvin Gaye. Mm. That is really interesting. And Edward, how about you? Mine's just like him to it. And it's kind of touchy because my mom was one of my biggest supporters, Mr. Wagner. We just buried her Saturday. So I'm oh. still, yeah, still a little touchy but she was one of my biggest influence. She would hear songs that I've written and produced that have won awards when it was song on my telephone. And she would always encourage me, don't ever give up, don't ever stop. And, and so I made up my mind and I even said with Parks, anything that Eat Music puts out, it will be in honor of my mother, but to the glory of God, because that's, that's our greatest influence as we know it. But when it comes down to a person that we would uh, attach it to or ascribe it to, it would be my mother and everything that I do will be in honor of her. And um, it, like I said, it's a touchy moment. And I heard this question, I almost started crying, but, and I know you didn't know that. And, um, but it would be my mother and one of my, uh, if I would say in terms of music, I, it's a team, it's Jam, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. I love the camaraderie. I love the brotherhood. I love the quality. I love how they brought a sound that changed the world. And so that would be mine. Certainly, indeed. I practically forgot about uh, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. They were so influential. It's amazing. I love that. I love that story I gave. And what's the best advice you guys can give to anybody at this point? Go ahead, Parks. My best advice will be uh, be authentic and be uniquely you. Uh, don't try to follow trends. Uh, find out who you are. Be happy with who you are. Be authentic with who you are, enjoy who you are, and other people will see your authenticity. And guess what? They will enjoy you also. 
So I have a thing, you know, let's all be better so we can help someone else be better and introduce them, Lord, to a God that can make us all better. That's great. I love it. Yes, I love it. And Edward, how about you? And, and, and I thought you was my friend up until now because you'd have me come behind that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I would say, because we're, we're really talking about at, at the core, Mr. Wagner, um, music. A lot of people love the stardom. They love the videos. They love the artistry. But nobody wants to learn the business. Mm. And there is a crowd of people in a line who are disgruntled, who are hurt, who are so angry that they'll never use their creativity again because they've been hurt so bad by an industry that they refuse to learn about. They just want it to be about. It. So it's like going to jump in a swimming pool and you didn't check how many feet it was and you can only swim in four. And so you found out it was a 10 foot pool and now you hate water. But the fact of the matter is you didn't inspect what you expected. And so now you, you got a bitter taste in your mouth. I would say to anybody, if you want to be in the music industry, Learn the music business or you'll have no industry. Mm, that is an excellent point. I really like that. I should have told my kids that. But of course, you know, we, we have in a baby pool. Thank goodness. It's like if you're expecting four feet and going to 10, you'd be disappointed. That's a really good analogy. I like that. You guys are amazing. Once again, Park Stewart and Edward Armstead III on the Mike Wagner Show. Guys, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely terrific. Thank Looking you, forward man. to having you again soon. Make sure you keep us up to date. Keep in touch. We'd love to have you guys back. And uh, once again, tell us about your upcoming projects. What's your website? How do people contact? Or can people purchase or check out your works? Well, you I know he's going to get past this to me. Well, you can find our music, once, as I said, on any digital platform. Of course, iTunes, Amazon, Apple Music, Spotify. Um, Park Stewart has his own uh, Facebook. I have Edward Armstead Third Facebook, which you will connect you to everything Eat Music. We have Eat Music Group Instagram. We have an Eat Music Group YouTube channel. And you can go to www.eatmusicgroup.com. It's the website for any questions, comments, or all things Park Stewart. Okay. And then Parks, how about you? What have you got to add? Nothing. He said it all. Everything. <laughs> when, you come, when you go to Eat Music Group, all things Park Stewart will come up. Man, I just want to thank you, uh, Mike, for having us. I have thoroughly enjoyed it, man. Man, and it's been fun. Oh, it's a lot of fun. We'd love to have you back. Looking forward to having you guys again soon. Make sure you keep us up to date, keep in touch. And definitely, you guys have a great future. Wish you all the best. Thank you. God bless you, man.